Welcome back to Bay Sunday. All women are beautiful, of course, unique in their very own way. And now there's a new pageant in California. It's not your typical beauty pageant, but something much more. Joining us at the table is Dania Denise from the Miss California Petite Pageant. Welcome to Bay Sunday. Thank you for having me. So tell us, what inspired you to kind of get this thing started? Well, I didn't grow up being a pageant girl. It was something that I fell into. I tried it, didn't win. That wasn't really the goal. But then I aged out at 26. And after a while, I, I started coaching and working with young ladies in pageants and modeling and acting. And I just thought to myself, OK, they're doing really well. So why can't I apply that to myself? And so I started looking at the internet, trying to find pageants where I wasn't too old. Yeah. And yeah, aging out at 26. It, it's it, it, a little ridiculous. Right. All due respect to the pageant industry, but it just didn't make sense to me. And I was fortunate enough to find the USA Petite pageant system, which is based out of Florida. So I represented California in the Ms. division, which is 24 to 40. And you can be single with kids. I don't have kids, but I qualified for the mm -hmm. age division. So I competed. I won. And I hadn't competed in a pageant for well over 10 years. And so the family that I found and the sisterhood that I found was so monumental to me, and especially the fact that they use the word petite in terms of height and not dress size. It's five, six and shorter. And the fact that it just seemed to represent a more realistic demographic of women was certainly something I wanted to get on board with. And when I found out that there weren't state preliminaries to qualify women for all 50 states, I just thought to myself, OK, I'm going to change that. And I want to start with California. So I became state director after my um, year of reign was over in 20, uh, 2016. So a lot of these women who go through this, th through these pageants, what do you think they, they take from the whole experience? You know, Take away from it, yeah. there's still a lot of stigma and there's a lot of critics and I'm not worried about them because what you look past when you see the stage show are the real life lessons that these women learn. You learn interview skills, you learn grooming and etiquette and how to look polished and professional. You learn on stage speaking. And what a lot of people fail to realize is a lot of these contestants that participate, regardless of whether they win or not, they come with a very strong community service involvement background. I know young ladies that started their own nonprofits. They work with all kinds of organizations to further those platforms and pageants give them that segue to continue reaching those goals and bringing attention to that. They are some smart, smart women. And for you personally, how did this experience kind of change the way you foresee yourself as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a model in the future? Absolutely. It, I, being 5'4", I've been in the entertainment industry for quite some time, and there's always been those doors where they said, oh, you're not 5'10", or you're not this, you're not that. So I've always had to work that much harder to prove that great things do come in small packages. And pageants kind of added to that to where I said, OK, I know I'm good at what I do. And I know a lot of other women that are doing the same thing as me. But these opportunities are we're literally being overlooked because of our height, because we tend to get compared to the whole fashion industry. It's a different beast. It's in the entertainment industry, but it's not quite the same. So why are we being judged by the same ideals that are not really reflecting what women really are these days. Mm -hmm. So pageantry gave that back to me and it allowed me to give back to the contestants that I work with, the young ladies that I coach outside of the pageant industry, um, outside of my own system, I should say, conflict of interest. I don't coach the girls that are in my own pageant, but hearing their stories, hearing their obstacles and seeing them continue to just do amazing things, how could you not want more people to know about that? Mm -hmm. So kind of my mission. Yeah. You know, there I think there are a lot of misconceptions about beauty pageants. People think it's just yes. about, you know, rating someone's look or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the message is for what do you, what's the message for the young women out there who are perhaps considering kind of taking that same path as you did? I would say don't overthink it. Just do it. Anytime I scout young ladies, I do come up to them, oh, I think you're really lovely, you know, how tall are you? And well, I'm only, and I go, you know what, take the word only out. It's all about mindset, it's all about perspective. I never have thought to myself, I wished I was taller. I always thought, I wish they represented shorter women. So it's just, just do it. Yeah. A lot of young ladies that do pageants for the first time end up winning. You don't have to have previous experience. My particular pageant system, we have an orientation. So you get a mock interview. You get a chance to learn the different types of walks. We want to prepare you so that you can be the best version of you possible. And it's not about comparing yourself to the other contestants. You have to be the best version of yourself. You are your own competition. And so we want to teach them that mindset. And they can carry it through the pageant. but. The rest of their lives as well, no matter what their goals are. You mentioned the walk. There's a lot of training that goes into that. There's a lot of stilettos. <laughs> it's, it's a little terrifying for, for first timers, but you know, we have the evening gown walk, which is slower and very elegant and regal and just possessing that 
wonderful feeling you feel when you put a beautiful gown on. And then you've got your swimwear walk, which is faster and sassier and, and you have fun with it. You're just enjoying being in your own skin. And literally, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, because you're on stage, you're performing <laughs> in front of people. But then you also have the interview aspect, which takes place privately. And that's a panel situation where one contestant at a time is interviewed by five judges. And it's based on their resume. It's based on their community platform. All of the contestants have to have some sort of cause or organization that they promote. And they will be promoting that should they win for that calendar year. So. There's, there's just a lot on the table, but learning to walk in heels is kind of the first stiletto step in the journey. Yeah, now for you, when you were competing in these pageants, the public speaking element yes. of, of the pageant, did that, was that something that you kind of were not looking forward to, or was that something that you kind of wanted to, to kind of take on? You know, growing up as a kid, I was always a performer. I always was comfortable reading books out loud and wanting to be a TV reporter, and that's what I went to school for. And so just performing was naturally in my blood. And there are a lot of young ladies that I meet who kind of have that, but they say, oh, I'm too shy. And I said, you know, some of the best ways to get over the shyness is to just throw yourself out into the fire and start dancing among the flames and kind of see what happens. And a lot of times it's very rewarding because you see that same person who a couple months ago said, I'm super shy. And then you see them now through pageantry or whatever endeavors they go through with entertainment, and you just you would never know. Really quickly, what's next for this pageant? Uh, scholarship money? Is that is that? So they have a the huge works? prize package. They got a lot of really cool fashion, free beauty, um, skincare accessories. They get a magazine shoot. They also will get their sponsorship paid to compete at the national competition in Florida. And if they win at the national competition, they get a free cruise. <laughs> nice. It's pretty Not awesome. Bad. And they'll learn the rest if they register and enter the pageant. Well, Dania, thanks for uh, joining us here this morning, telling us all about it, and also setting a great example for a lot of the young women out there. Thank you, it's been Appreciate a pleasure. It. For more information about the Miss Petite California pageant, you could go to misscaliforniapetite.com. All right, coming up, how to protect your family's financial future when Bay Sunday continues after this quick break.